Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn how to parse a full name and then put it into individual fields. The source code for this video is available at my GitHub address. The function written in this video will be able to parse these type of names. Here's the function we're about to write, fn parse full name. Notice here we pass in Thomas J. Wilson IV and it produces Wilson, last name, the suffix is the fourth, first name Thomas, middle initial J. You can see here we're returning a table. So this function is known as a table valued function. You ready? We need to declare some local variables. Notice we have last name, suffix, first name, middle initial, section one, section two, and then an offset. You'll see in just a moment how important these two variables are here. As you can see on line 24 and 25, I'm using the split part function. I'm taking in the input parameter full name and I'm going to run it through this function. Down here on line 33, I'm showing you how to do that. Notice I say trim Wilson the fourth Thomas J dot and I'm going to split parts and notice it goes Give me my input string, tell me what separates the strings, and then tell me what part of the parts I want. Notice I'm saying I want part one, which returns me Wilson the fourth. Had I have said two, what do you think that returns? You got it, Thomas J. Let's run that. Notice we get Thomas J. So lines 24 and 25, just make parsing a little bit more easy for me. Now, my parts are very, very small. On line 30, if position, notice it has two parameters. The first one is I'm looking for the pattern. And the second part of this is saying, where is that pattern you want me to search? And I'm saying from section one. Notice down here, I come and execute it for you. Notice, select position. I'm looking for that space. Now, inside of this pattern, where do you see a space? That's right, you see it between Wilson and the fourth. Now, what it's gonna do is gonna count the number of characters over, that is, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you see the space is at position seven. Here I'm saying if the space in there is greater than set, uh, zero, well, we know it's seven, so I'm gonna come down here and then I'm gonna split section one again and I'm gonna take the first part of this. So I'm gonna put Wilson into last name string. You see that. On line 33, look, I'm trying to build the position again and I'm gonna store that value into offset one. You know what position one does now. It's gonna go through this string and look for a character of type 32, a space. Then I'm gonna use this offset over here from offset. Now we know this character is in this pattern at position seven. So I'm gonna say take the substring from position seven. Notice I came down here on 49 and executed that command and notice it gets me the fourth. Now I know what the suffix is, but that's not good enough. I need to make sure that this suffix is one of the ones that I say is valid. Notice, for here, for here, suffix gets set. Now, if it's not in there, then what I do is just last name equals the full string. You will see in a couple of minutes where I had to do this because of like people that use the father's first last name, the mother's last name as their last name. So this will support those type of names. We're now ready to look at section two. Do you remember when we did split parts and I came over and I said two and it returned me Thomas J dot? Well, that's section two. Let's solve that problem. Notice on line 45, I say if position. Now I'm looking for a space in section two. Well, you just learned how to use position. What does this do? Well, it goes through Thomas space J dot and goes find that character. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's also seven. So is seven greater than zero? Yes. So then I'm gonna take first name and I'm gonna split section two 
and I'm going to take part one and put that into first name. And then offset one, I'm going to go find a space in section two. Here, I'm trying to get the middle initial. I have this just for debugging purposes, so you'll be able to see the output of that. And then notice here, I say middle initial equals the substring of section two from offset one that we just built. That's all there is to this. Now, if the position of that space turns out to be zero, then first name just equals the entire section two. And guess what? Section two is all done. We are now down to line 61, return query. Notice I'm saying select full name string. Well, that was our input parameter. Then you saw we built last name string and suffix from section one. Section two had first name string and middle initial string. And you know they return up here in this returns table. These are the columns that I will be turning to the caller of this method. Notice at the bottom here, the input came as Wilson the fourth, Thomas J. And then I returned Wilson, see that last name? You can see that here. Suffix, you can see that here. Uh, first name here and middle initial here. So returns table. When I'm developing a function or store procedure, I normally put raise notice, some kind of variable name and its value into this placeholder. And I do that so I can debug. Notice here, click on the messages tab and notice I get the output. So full name, that was my input parameter. It got Wilson the fourth, Thomas J. All the way down to after I ran it and it gives me the J dot for the initial. To comment out this section, especially before we go to production, let's just comment it out by using forward slash star and finishing it with star backslash. And now when we run our program in production mode, we will not see these raised notices. And there you have it team. In this video, I exposed you to several internal string functions. These functions are true gems. And now that you know them, you'll be able to tackle bigger problems. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them below. I hope you'll come back and watch more videos on my channel. And until then, take care.